Hello and welcome. I'm Carolyn, your host. Welcome to Weekly Minis, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. You can reference all of our previous Weekly Minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube and in the Acro Dance Resource Center. And teachers, I'm super excited. I hope you are too. This is a very special Weekly Mini. Uh, we have an amazing guest. We have an amazing partner. And this is episode number 99. So that means 99 workshops, including this one on the hottest Acro topics literally waiting for you to dive in. Speaking of diving in, here we go. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you at the end. If you know someone who should hear about today's topic, be a friend and tag them in the comments or share this post with them right now and let them know that we're here. Our guest today is none other than Vicki Fletcher. Vicki has been teaching Acro for over 35 years. She's a dance competition adjudicator, award-winning choreography for and experienced workshop instructor. With a passion for staying up to date on the latest training techniques, Vicki is here to share her proven tips for mastering the back layout step out and demonstrate how to use tumble track tumbling mats with sp skill specific drills and progressions to help your students conquer this advanced skill. But that's not all. As an acrobatic arts certified teacher, you'll also want to stick around for a special announcement regarding our partnership with TumbleTrack, a trusted brand known for their high quality equipment designed to enhance skills for athletes and dancers of all levels. We're thrilled to offer an exclusive TumbleTrack promotion for our certified teachers, so be sure to tune in and find out how you can take advantage of this exciting opportunity. So now, without further ado, let's turn things over to Vicki from her home studio in Mickey, at Mickey's Dance Connection. Welcome, Vicki. Morning. Morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I am good. That was a mouthful, um, but as you <laughs> know, <laughs> I am super excited to have you. Um, we uh, really value your time and your expertise and um, that you're taking time out this morning to share that with our community. So I will let you take it away. All right. Well, good morning, teachers. Super happy to be here. Um, it's been a little while since I've done a mini, so I'm super excited to be back. Um, so today we're going to talk about the back layout step out and I'm just going to um, talk a little bit about it first um, and just kind of the way I teach it. So I know a lot of teachers will teach the back tuck first and that's not wrong by any means. Um, it's, it's the opposite than what I do. So I always teach the layout first only because no matter what I'm teaching, so handstands, um, headstands, forearm stands, I teach straight body first only because it's the hardest body position to actually um, acquire and to un understand. Um, but I would rather teach the harder skill first than teach something that's involving an arch in the back, which then makes it really hard for them to understand the stacking that's really important in these skills. So um, no matter what the age of my dancers are, they always, especially with handstands, are always doing straight body. So I think that's why I've always taught the layout step out first is because the layout step out, the layout is meaning that it's in that laid out position. So their body is completely open where as a tuck, they're pulling their knees into their chest. So they're piking in their hips. And that to me is, um, it's, a, it's actually, it's easier for them to pull their knees up, but for them to actually throw it safely, a back tuck scares me a little bit more than the back layout. So if you have dancers that have a really strong back handspring step out, um, I have more confidence in them doing the back layout where they can safely put their hands down in the middle of it if they don't get the height that they need, as opposed to a back tuck. If that rotation isn't there and they haven't used their knees properly to create that back tuck, then that's where we are going to see them coming down on their back or on their head, which can be really, really scary. So if you have dancers that have really strong back handspring step outs, and I mean really strong, so don't start these guys super young just because um, they you feel like they really need to get these skills they don't they need the proper progressions leading up to it first so that when you do start these harder skills it's not going to be a problem for them and they're going to be able to do it safely okay so i like that laid out body position it's just like when um so teaching a front aerial i will never teach a flip to sit and as much as it's a lot easier a front handspring i will never teach a front handspring before a front aerial because it teaches them to um, do different things with their body. It teaches them to pull their head in. It teaches them to sit down with their hips. 
all of those things that will, will make a front aerial, which is a harder skill, that much harder for them to get. So with the layout, I would much rather see them work with that open body position right off the bat. And once they master that layout, I find the tuck super easy for them to get. Where if I've taught the tuck first, I find the layout really hard to get because they wanna lead with their knees instead of leading with their hips. So with the layout, super important that everything is coming from the hips and from a strong set. So I'm gonna talk about the sets the most right now because it's really, really important. So I'm gonna get, this is my demonstrator. This is Bentley, you wanna say hi? So Bentley's still young, she's just 10. So all her skills are not completely perfect, right? So these are things that she's still working on as well. So we're gonna work on the set, which is extremely important. So the set is making sure that those arms are lifting straight up to the ceiling and their body is in that straight body position the entire time. And they're leading with their hips and not with their knees, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna get Bentley to do are some drills that they can do laying flat on the mat. I'm just gonna get her to lay on our panel mats here. Um, so she's gonna lay on her back. One thing I like about these panel mats compared to some panel mats is that they are, they're really um, strong and not soft. So they're firmer mats. Um, I find soft mats are actually more dangerous for your dancers. It's gonna cause things like twisting in their ankles and twisting in their wrists. So make sure when you're choosing these mats that they are nice and firm and the tumble track mats are fantastic for that. So this is going to be a back handspring drill. So the way Bentley is laying right now, she's in a really nice tight body. So this is how you would start standing in your back handspring. Her arms are gonna come down mimicking when we do the sit and then she's gonna push her hips up and she's gonna go to that hollow position with just the shoulders on the floor, ready? And she goes down and then she can hold and then lower and then she'll do it again. Down, up, and keeping everything super, super tight. And down, do it one more time. Down and up. So super tight with everything she's doing. Only the feet and the shoulders will be on the ground there. And this is, again, allowing the hips to come up. So she's not going to be pulling the feet off the ground. It's all coming from the hips. So now I'm going to actually get her to move down. And she's going to put her feet up on my incline mat here. This incline mat is also um, from Tumble Track. And I absolutely love this. We actually did um, a mini quite a while ago, actually, on incline mats. But this mat gets used so much, it's insane. So if you um, have the, the means to, to invest in something, this large incline mat is fantastic. So now she's going to put her legs up on a height. She's going to do the exact same drill. And go. Good. And then down. And go again. And relax. So one thing I actually like when I put her up on this mat, rather than just the regular mats on the floor, is they're more narrow, right? So it's making sure that those arms are staying tight by her side and you don't get any of these wide arms happening, all right? So now we're gonna do, that's more of a back handspring drills. Can you just lay on the mat? We're gonna do the layout ones now. So now for the layout, it's the hips that initiate it, but the arms are gonna come down when the hips initiate that layout position, okay? So she's going to, start with her arms at her side instead of up she's going to do it slow so she's going to go arms up and then she's going to smack the floor and her hips are going to come up so it's a, a, the opposite from the, the arm position is the opposite than the back handspring and then now do it quick down, up. good and squeezing and then down and go again up. one more time okay and then she can do the exact same thing feet on Ready and go. Good. Even more. Go. Yes. So even more, she pushed up even farther on the shoulders. These are great drills. You can get your entire class doing them. And they can be working on these long before they're even ready for the layouts. So understanding the activation of the hips is so much different than if you teach the back tuck first, because what's going to happen is it's the knees that are going to come up. So then that piking in the hips happens. Um, I find anything. So if you find, if I go back to a front aerial, I find as soon as they start to do a front aerial, they pop their chin forward, right? They pull their chin in and they sit back in their hips and they go into this position, which is that protective position that we will automatically go into when we're scared we're going to fall or hurt ourselves. We don't open up like this. We close in, right? So to be able to stay open and to learn that first is a lot easier than for them to pull in this way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it is not wrong to teach the back tuck first. This is just the way I like to, 
and it tends to work for me. So um, another thing is that super, super tight body. So I'm going to get Bentley. Can you just stand at the back there and face this way? You're going to do the jump on, jump off. So just squeezing her arms nice and tight. I'm going to get her to jump up and down off the mat and go up, squeeze, tight, tight, tight. Okay, so on and off, she would do a bunch of those. We can stand on the mat and go side to side. And go down, up, down, up, keeping everything tighter, tighter, tighter. There, so when they're doing these, you're gonna watch and make sure that they're not opening in their rib cage, so they're not arching their back. Everything is staying tight. Their arms are up by their ears, okay? Um, so all of these drills are gonna help work on that body shaping. So keeping everything super, super tight, making sure that the hips are what's gonna initiate that layout. So now we're going to go on to the back handspring. So we're going to do a back handspring step out. But when we do this, I'm going to get Bentley to do it up the mat. So first of all, it gets a little scary, actually. Can you unfold that to the blue mat? The second one? Yeah. I'm going to move this a little bit this way so you can see better. So I'm going to get Bentley to stand in front of the mat with her heels against it. Okay. And she's going to do a back handspring step out onto this mat. Okay. So her second foot's going to hit the higher mat, but that's okay. We just didn't unfold it right now. So go ahead, she's gonna go up, yeah, okay? So she does her back handspring step out onto that. It's only like a few inches off the ground, so it's not too bad. Um, let them do this a few times to build their confidence and then you're gonna put the mat back up. All right, now she's gonna do it onto this height. So she's gonna make sure she's in the middle of the mat, nice tight body, and go ahead, up. Okay, so this is making her go up a lot higher. So she's already mastered that back handspring step out. Now this is gonna make her go higher and higher and higher. I'm gonna move her back and she's gonna do it onto the incline mat now. So now it's even higher. Go ahead. Okay, so we're gonna watch and make sure that she has enough height to get up onto these mats, okay? Um, this is just gonna teach them that spring in that needs to come from their, from their feet from that initial whatever you want to do, whether it's a cartwheel or whether you do it from a round off. Um, now I'm gonna get her to do a cartwheel back handspring step out. Actually, can you do it on here and I'm gonna spot her. I'm gonna spot her with this connection because she hasn't done it for a while. They have to really kind of gauge where they're gonna be on the mats to make sure that it happens safely. So I'm gonna do it, but it's also a good way for you teachers to get in there and practice your own spotting, okay? doesn't matter what side you're on. I'm going to spot on this side just so my back's not to you. So I'm going to help her with the connection, and she's going to do the cartwheel back handspring step out onto the height. Okay. Okay. So you're going to get in there with your hands. Make sure that your my I like to be down more around her hip area because this is what I want her to push up. Okay. Do it one more time. Okay. <laughs> so that time she was a little bit off kilter but again these mats coming i love them because they're more narrow they're only the four foot wide mats um these are great because then it keeps them really online okay so now can you go actually can you do it down i'm going to use the incline mat now and she's going to do cartwheel back handspring step out go ahead she's going to go down the incline mat okay this is gonna help with some momentum. It's gonna help her get her feet in a little bit faster. Um, you can do it with the round off too. I do tend to do um, a cartwheel into layouts quite a bit more than a round off. And in fact, if I asked you, Bentley, you can tell me the honest truth, but would you rather do a cartwheel layout or would you rather do a backhand or a round off layout? Cartwheel. So she likes the cartwheel layout. If they if they really understand the mechanics of that cartwheel rebound, they're gonna probably really like that as opposed to the round off. Now, can you do it going up? So incline mat's great. You can do up and down. Going up is gonna build um, power. So she needs to push a lot harder going up the incline where the going down is gonna build speed, okay? So now she's gonna go up. Okay, and she's gonna keep working on this and working on this until she builds so much power. Like I'm gonna get, do one more for me. Okay, so she's gonna keep doing that until she gets higher and higher and higher and builds more and more strength, okay? So then once she's built that strength, then we take away the mats and then she can do things on um, the floor and start going for it that way. So do you wanna just do it on the floor here? Come this way. 
I'm going to get her just to do the, the cartwheel layout on the floor for now. Hopefully you guys can see that. If not, I will move the mats. Okay, go ahead. It's a little close. Okay, I'm going to move the mats really quick. Let's, can you just push those out of the way for me? All right, so now we'll get her to do it on the mat. Then she's farther back. So it's really hard to watch this, but what you want to make sure that's happening, and the biggest thing that I see in layouts is that they lay on their cartwheel or they lay on their round off, and then they throw back with their head, and they're not leading with their arms first. So that clear set needs to come to the ceiling, and then arms super tight down by the bodies. So we're going to get Bentley to do it and really pay attention to her arms when she's doing it. Okay, so nice strong arm set to the ceiling. Um, so those are the biggest things that I can say to watch for is that they have enough height. They're leading with their arms, not their head. Their head's going to stay in line as long as it possibly can. Okay, so same with back handsprings. You never want to say, look back. That head should never come out of line. It's going to stay in line as long as possible. Okay, and then making sure that it's the hips that's causing the rotation and not the knees coming in. So sometimes I see the knees come in and they almost do like a tuck layout. So they tuck their knees in and then split. So we wanna make sure that they're staying in that open body position the entire time. It's super hard for them to get into that open body position, but I don't know, try it. If you're, if you're just starting with your dancers, maybe try starting with the layout and see how it goes. Um, I'd love to hear how it goes and see if people find the same thing that I do. Can you do it from um, a round off? Yeah. So she'll do it from a from a round off this time. Just don't go too far past. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether she's coming from a cartwheel or from a round off. I think they're both the same height. So as long as she understands where that power is coming from, it's coming from those strong arms, from the push in the hips. Um, also, like I could go on about this forever, but the connection of it is huge. So make sure that when they are doing the cartwheel rebounds and they are doing the um, round off rebounds, make sure that rebound is always going up and back and never forward. Okay. So if they are doing a rebound and jumping forward, can you do that? Can you do like a cartwheel rebound. Don't do the layout, just do cartwheel rebounds, but rebound forward and not back. Okay, so if they're doing that, there's no way that they should be doing a layout. They're in the wrong position. They're not getting their heels into the ground. That rebound always has to go back. So big skill there to um, look for and make sure that it's happening, that it's going up. Um, so that is our quick little tutorial today on a layout. I could go on for so long and I'm just like, oh, I'm going to just keep, keep mustering through this. Well... <laughs> First of all, uh, yes, I mean, uh, a plethora, a lot, so much information. And I know that you know so much, like we said at the beginning, years of experience teaching. Um, this is next level, right? We're looking at more advanced tumbling skills. Absolutely. So uh, amazing, Bentley. Thank you for being also so versatile in your ability to um, show us whatever Miss uh, Vicky. Um, put in your way. It definitely helps our teacher community. Um, I would say, Vicki, um, for teachers, could, um, Bentley, do you mind pulling that those mats back in? You grab those. I'll bring um, Just uh, saying, too, like, <clears throat> Vicki, if people are looking at this and we know that this is the next level where to go to advanced skill, module three level skills, but when we're talking about mats in the gym, something like this, like these tumble mats, tumbling mats, or as you call them, panel mats, they come, they're so versatile. They can be put, uh, you know, they could be a first purchase. Could they not? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying the incline mat. So like these panel mats are fantastic and like lay them out and just use them as mats. I love the fact that they're all different colors. Especially when I have little ones and I say, you're on the blue mat, you're on the purple mat, you're on the, right? They understand and they literally can just go to it. Um, it's also a good way to mark out the length of back handsprings. Start on the blue, I need you to finish on the purple. You know what I mean? Like, and it's so good. Like on my long mats, I have tape marks that are like every six feet and we do stuff like that. But 
The panel mats, make, panel mats make it a lot easier, but I love that the panel mats I can unfold, right? So I can go down and down and down. I'm not really a big one that goes off a mat. I'm usually one that goes on. Like it's not usually the momentum coming off it. To me, that doesn't really help my dancers. I find it's like, if I'm even gonna do it as learn um, side aerials, I won't do them off a mat. I'll do flying onto the mat. Right. And those heights of those mats really help. They helps that push, right? A lot of them just aren't getting the height. So to me to go off the mats, it makes them go down. It doesn't make them go up. Does that make sense? It does. It absolutely. That's why I do back handsprings on where I know a lot will do a back handspring off. I don't want Bentley to stand on the end of the mat and do a back handspring off. To me, that's way too much impact on the arms. It's too, I don't know. To me, that's not as safe. I'd rather her go up and use her legs more. It's your strongest part in your body, right? So she needs to use those legs for this as much as possible. So that helps. But I love the fact that the panel mat lets me do that. My rollout mat, I can't do that, right? So, and yeah. that pit pillow is fantastic for things. That, that gives them that extra cushioning when learning. It helps them with their landing. Sometimes it gets hard on the ankles when they're landing. So using the pit pillow is fun for them to use. Gives them a little bit more um, confidence and security. Gotcha. Okay, well, definitely places to go. Skills and drills and uh, the top tips coming from Vicky for this specific skill. So teachers, we have the expert here in the room. You're in the chat. Lots and lots of chatter, uh, lots of uh, props uh, to you, Vicky, for this presentation. Lots of thanks. Rachel says this was fabulous and makes uh, so much sense to do first and so much prettier too. Um, I'm guessing that that has to do with um, one of the steps that you um, presented. Probably between this, this, this step out and the tuck. So I very rarely put a tuck in a routine. For me to put a tuck in a routine, it has to specifically call for that back tuck, like something hard and powerful. I, would, I don't think I've ever put one in a lyrically routine, you know? Um, but yeah, the layout's a lot easier on their joints, right? It's just same as the step out is a lot easier than a back handspring. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, teachers, now's the time if you have any other questions. Otherwise, uh, we will wrap things up. Uh, just lots of praise, Vicki. I think you nailed it. So um, if there are any other questions, um, please, teachers, you can leave those in the chat. Um, and uh, Vicki will see those there and we can get back to you with some more information. But I think uh, plenty there for you to take away. Um, so teachers, if you want to learn um, how to teach advanced skills like this and work with Vicki, now is your time. It's just been announced that our much anticipated and rare module three teacher training course is coming to Stony Creek. Creek, Ontario, October 13th to 14th. That's this fall. Sign up now to secure your spot and take your training to the next level. I will put the link in the comments. Um, there is questions, but we should probably move on. Um, so if you, uh, we are also a proud partner, if you couldn't tell today with Tumble Track, a trusted brand, as we said, renowned for their innovative and high quality equipment designed for, uh, to enhance skills and, uh, for athletes and dancers of all levels. We are thrilled to be offering an exclusive Tumble Track promotion for our certified teachers. Acrobatic arts teachers will be able to enjoy 15% off Tumble Track products with a special discount code, which can be found now in the certified teachers Facebook group immediately after this presentation and for our module one and up certified teachers it will be on your certified teachers page after logging in at acrobaticarts.com so vicky thank you so very very much for today amazing thank you for having us absolutely bentley do you want to take a bow <laughs> she's like oh no <laughs> Awesome. So thank you, teachers. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Bentley. Thank you, Tumble Track. Join us again next week. See you then. Bye.